Welcome all. FAST, or the foundation for Armenian science and technology, is FAST building a network of Armenian scientists and technologists with the aim of making Armenia an innovation hub. The organization partners with organizations around the world, both governmental and non-governmental. I'm joined now by Susanna Shamachian, the Vice President of Strategic Programming at the Foundation. She led the organizing of many initiatives, including the Global Innovation Forum. So Susanna, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a bit about FAST? FAST, can you introduce the organization to us? And the organization is aiming to make Armenia an innovation hub by 2040. Can you explain that a bit? And also, can you explain what we mean by innovation hub? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, well, FAST was created around four, four and a half years ago. Um, and it was created after 2016, were actually in, in, a, in an attempt to unlock the technological potential of the, of the nation and, and try to help build uh, more prosperous and stronger Armenia. And obviously the lifespan would be around 20, 25 years from then. Uh, 2041 is actually a symbolic number. It's 50 years after anniversary of independence that we would want to envision. But also what drives FAST is that we have a vision and aspiration uh, that Armenia can become top technological country if we really, really work hard on that. Um, and the way we anticipate it for Armenia to do a technological leapfrog, so-called. So that's, uh, that's something that very few nations in the world have done, such as Israel, Asia Miracle countries or Estonia. What this basically means is that around the lifespan of 20, 25 years, a country does a very significant leap in their technological progress. So this is what we hope for Armenia to achieve, and this is what drives us on our daily activities. Mm -hmm. And recently, the mm -hmm. US Office of Naval Research and other US Army representatives sent a delegation to Armenia, and you met them, and, mm -hmm. and this was quite a important visit. Can you tell us a bit about this visit and why um, it uh, made headlines? Sure. Um, so, um, Office of Naval Research Global is uh, a very interesting entity that focuses on funding blue sky ideas uh, globally. So, they have, uh, they have funded uh, many uh, projects around 190 countries, so basically all over the world. So what they are trying to support is fundamental research that has a potential uh, to help create technologies or make discoveries that would help make different types of leaps in various areas of science in, in 20 years or in 10 years, etc. And in their portfolio, they have a very impressive list of uh, researchers and Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize winners that they have funded in their very early uh, stages of their research careers. So that's what they are looking for um, in various countries. And this is uh, why we have organized for them this trip to come to Armenia and see what Armenia may offer to them from that perspective. And so the blue sky idea is what they're looking for when they when they come yes. to various countries around the world. So what would what would the criteria for a blue sky idea be? Yeah, blue sky ideas or moonshot ideas. <laughs> it's hard to explain, uh, but what they are basically basically looking for would be if put in very simple uh, language, like crazy ideas that no other research entity would fund because they sound outrageous or too risky um, and not justified enough, but they are looking for champions in science or so scientists who are extremely passionate about what they are doing and they believe that they can um, prove the hypothesis or whatever idea that they have. And this is the type of ideas and people they invest in, in a hope uh, that these people would really succeed in trying to, to create those new uh, technologies or make those discoveries. So basically any researcher that dreams big <laughs> uh, and uh, wants to risk um, you know, uh, various things would, would qualify to apply for this. And they have basically no restrictions as to who can receive the actual funding as long as the idea qualifies for, for this craziness level. <laughs> well, that's interesting. The idea of a crazy idea yeah. could in a sense be the innovative breakthrough one day as we've seen many Precisely. examples around around the world so 
uh, there are these grant research programs that FAST is involved in. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us exactly about how it works and any perhaps success, uh, successes that came out of it? From, from the research projects that mm -hmm. we are funding at yes. FAST. So um, since early um, uh, inception of FAST, we have had different types of grants that we offer researchers. We have kick-started it with a fellowship program that would fund you know, top STEM PhD students, uh, best talents in the country. Um, and we have funded 19 students like that in 2018-19. Uh, we have been also funding travel grants uh, for collaborative research. So that would mean that somebody would be able to travel from two weeks to two months, either abroad or invite their counterpart to Armenia. Uh, and the output had to be uh, an article in Impact Factor Journal, which is the main benchmark of the quality of research that researchers would uh, produce. Uh, but after many different initiatives that we have been doing, both for scientists and students and startups, um, what we have come across is that there are several um, missing components in, in research funding in Armenia. So we have come up with a new framework that is called advanced STEM research grant program. The entire idea of the framework is we bring in an international principal investigator, so basically someone who leads the research project. We ask that person to shape the research project and also identify what type of a research group they would need to, to be able to accomplish that research project. Once we have that, we then do an open call for applications for researchers to apply for that research project. And basically anyone that qualifies can apply regardless of their affiliation. Um, and uh, the funding framework is quite comprehensive and, and very big for Armenian local, like compared to other local fundings for research that is available. We provide both salary and travel grant and capacity building uh, for the researchers, either here or abroad, and also some lab support, let's say any compounds they would need for their experimentation and these types of things. Uh, the importance here is that the quality assurance in a way uh, or the burden of ensuring the quality of the research project and the growth of the research group is on the international PI who is a successful um, researcher somewhere either in Europe or USA or Asia. Uh, we currently have uh, two ongoing projects like that for example where uh, one, one of them is for example in biotech and the PI is uh, from Germany. Um, and he is a diasporan Armenian. Obviously, in the first years, we anticipate diasporan researchers to, to be the main uh, you know, leaders in this because we have an untapped potential for sure from that perspective. Oftentimes, we make a mistake by approaching people only for money and you know, not involving in content uh, or just you know, giving an advisor's role to people, which is not always efficient. For the last 30 years, many uh, people have been trying to advise people, but that doesn't bring really any disruption. What we do with this framework is actually we have the diaspora researcher lead the entire process and also provide this knowledge transfer. And it's an exceptional process to follow because it indeed works at the moment. And that in conditions where the PI itself, uh, himself or herself, don't receive salary at the moment. So this is pure... Um, you know, a pro bono activity for them in a way. I mean, we would fund their travel, let's say, to Armenia and that type of thing, but they don't really get salary for this. And what we witness, which is quite exciting, is that we don't have lack of these types of people abroad who are willing to do that for free, as long as there is someone who would organize that for them. And as long as there are researchers locally who would want to, to grow and to do competitive research with them. So this is what we really now focus on and we hope if we scale the program and have dozens of groups like that in Armenia, that will bring a lot of uh, differentiator locally. And as for the Armenian government, the Armenian government has made it very clear that they too want to grow the tech sector. It's one of the countries in the world that has a whole ministry dedicated to tech. Um, what are some of the things the government can do, however, to make all these processes easier? Uh, for example, uh, some would say that the allocation of resources, the synergy between different entities is something that needs to be worked on. So how does FAST uh, view um, the ways in which the Armenian government could perhaps make 
these processes easier? Yeah, um, it's a complex question, especially as much as the government is continuously in transition phases for various reasons. Um, that lack of stability obviously brings its impact on many things and also expectations by the stakeholders. Um, I would say that the only way we are really going to bring change here is if we are bold about the way we do things because we have been trying to improve, let's say, or reform things for the last 30 years and this wasn't really very successful. Um, and I think it's um, time to be a little bit more um, courageous about the things that we are uh, doing. That doesn't mean destroying whatever exists, but it does mean um, you know, being ready that some people or some entities might be unhappy with some things. But if you do really want to bring change to the country, that has to be done. For example, funding mechanisms of researchers and universities have to change. We, it has to be a KPI-driven uh, system where you would be providing more funding to teams, to universities, to entities that perform and less uh, that don't perform. And also encourage, in a way, consolidation of resources. Just to bring a perspective, we have around up to 80,000 students less in our higher education system. And I'm not speaking about the quality at all, just the quantity. Mm -hmm. And we have over 60 universities and branches of universities in Armenia. Uh, let's say University of Sapienza in Rome, which is just one of the universities, they're alma mater, but there are a lot of other universities in Rome, has 110,000 students in one university, in one city where other universities exist. Um, which means that we definitely have an issue of consolidating resources. We need maybe five, seven really strong universities and on top of that some really strong research institutes in the country that would potentially be able to produce more results with the same resources available, but then if you even put more resources on that, uh, even more. Obviously, I'm not saying this is an easy thing to do. There are a lot of uh, issues that come with it, but these are necessary things to do if we really do intend to bring in change in army. Because if we continue doing things that the way we were doing, nothing will change, obviously. Um, so, yeah, from that perspective, government um, has a very complicated task of potentially being, you know, simultaneously the good and the bad cop it's sometimes challenging to do but also in setting priorities like when there is clarity you know what for example for high-tech industry to say to the private sector these are the priorities please you know consolidate your resources toward this area that can also bring a lot of impact if you look into how much money the industry is spending on closing the gap that the education system has how many training centers, how many educational programs the private sector is funding at their own cost, and the government is also funding the higher education. So imagine the amount of money that is being spent. And imagine if, you know, these things would be more streamlined and the government would say, you know what, private sector, the money that you're spending on education, would you be able to do it in this way or in these priority areas? And that would, you know, create this chain process where you would know that PPP model, private-public partnership model would, would work because we, I think, have fallen into a zone where we do a lot of blaming. Private sector blames government, government blames uh, everyone um, when in, in fact various it's a, issues. Yeah. But in fact, there is just no other way but consolidating the efforts. Mm -hmm. It can be no single uh, you know, entity or side or whatever you want to put it, trying to resolve the entire issues. The beauty of Armenia, though, is like I really want uh, to bring optimism to this, that it is very small. Mm -hmm. The country is really enough small for us to be able to do disruptive changes in short uh, amount of time. And that is an advantage in a way which we can be smart about. And um, I mean, obviously, FAST works with a lot of international partners as well. Um, I'm curious, uh, these corporations, uh, 
what sort of reactions do you get from these people about Armenia and its tech sector? Obviously, they have seen uh, much of the tech sectors of the world. I'm interested what they say when they come to Armenia. Yeah, well, maybe the most fresh visit would be the uh, naval officers uh, visit, which uh, we all are um, very happy with the results and, and with their findings because um, they have found much more opportunities here than they would anticipate to find in such a small country. And what's interesting about it is that most likely the fact that we have so many restrictions and limited resources, limited funding, that has triggered those who are really passionate about science to do uh, like to have outstanding results, uh, which you wouldn't anticipate them to have, but that is exactly the type of the passion they would be looking for. They did have good um, expectations before coming, so they were hoping to see young scientists, startups, and also a uh, good legacy in research, but it was beyond their expectations what they have seen, um, even in the contrast of things that they have seen. So we have had meetings both with the academy, uh, the universities and also young scientists and startups and business representatives. So they have seen various types of stakeholders. In from that perspective, Armenia is an interesting country of contrasts, um, and they were very impressed. Uh, we had the same feedback during the global innovation forums, where we would have, you know, various uh, researchers and entrepreneurs and investors and policymakers from various countries coming into Armenia uh, with expectations that they might see something, but they wouldn't expect to see so many dynamics. And most importantly, the passion that they see in many people uh, is what they are trying to build on. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, do you think you can tell us a bit about any of FAST's future plans coming uh, in the coming years? Yeah, well, when it comes to research, we are now really focusing on scaling this advanced STEM research grant program. So we hope to do dozens of those in the upcoming uh, five years. We are even now um, organizing a fundraising dinner in Los Angeles in February. Uh, it's going to be uh, on February 16th, where we would be gathering the diaspora community and, you know, obviously presenting whatever Armenia currently has and what potential it has and also what these types of frameworks can help us all achieve together, how diaspora scientists themselves personally can engage and how we can really tap into their knowledge from that perspective. So that's one of the priorities for sure. We also unavoidably go into the education sector because what we have witnessed and what becomes obvious when you do any type of research on what is the situation on the ground uh, we have to start at school because we lose a lot of talent earlier on. We don't have enough teachers, we don't have enough access to quality education, especially when it comes to STEM. There's a lot of buzz around this, but there is very few that is being done in um, con sort of in a, system in a systemic way to really take the kid from by hand and take them up until, uh, until the end to the research career. So there are a lot of fragmented efforts in, in the ecosystem, which are all good, but now it's time to try to consolidate and scale a lot of things. So we are now really focusing on high school education in the coming two years at least, um, and then potentially going to starting from elementary school. We also have some activities in universities where we really uh, try to encourage, you know, starting from BAMA for people to go into research career because we, we want to demonstrate there, there are a lot of opportunities in research. The research career is the young successful scientist, uh, you know, that has a lot of opportunities, that has a, also a potential to create a science intensive startup. And we have several venture building programs that would help them do that as well. So basically trying to start from education, support their research career, and also help them innovate to do science entrepreneurship, um, as, as we call it, and to create that entire value chain through several initiatives that we have. Okay, Ms. Shamachian, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.